2017 Land Rover Discovery. Driving the new disco in muddy Scotland. Specifications. Vehicle type. Front engine, all-wheel drive, 5 or 7 passenger, 4-door hatchback. Base prices. SEV6, $50,985. House V6, $57,945. House TD6, $59,945. House Luxury V6, $64,945. House Luxury TD6, $66,945. First edition V6, $74,945. Engine types. Turbocharged and intercooled DOE C24 valve diesel 3.0 liter V6, 254 HP, 443 LBFT, supercharged and intercooled DOE C24 valve 3.0 liter V6, 340 HP, 332 LBFT. Transmission. 8-speed automatic with manual shifting mode. Dimensions. Wheelbase, 115.0 to 115.1 in. Length, 195.7 in. Width, 81.6 in height, 72.7 in. Passenger volume, 104 to 139 cu foot. Cargo volume, 9 to 45 cu foot. Curb weight, C slash DEST 5150 to 5300 pounds. Performance, C slash DEST. 0 to 60 miles per hour, 6.7 to 7.6 SEC. 0 to 100 miles per hour, 18.6 to 21.7 SEC. Standing 1 fourth mile, 15.2 to 15.9 SEC. Top speed, 130 to 133 miles per hour. Fuel economy, C slash DEST. EPA combined slash city slash highway driving, 18-24 slash 16-22 slash 20-27 MPG. Jaguar Land Rover likes the initial experiences of its new vehicles to be in environments that prevent anything other than the most rudimentary dynamic assessment. Back in January, for example, our first spin in the Jaguar F-Pace took place on a frozen lake in Sweden. Now our initial turn in the new Land Rover Discovery is happening on a vast private estate in Scotland, one nearly the same size as the city of Chicago, where we discover it's possible to drive for three solid hours on a route consisting entirely of gravel and mud. As you would expect, the new discovery is very good indeed on gravel and mud. Land Rover is supposed to be about adventure, but these days it's also about luxury, the famous badge likely inspiring just as many thoughts of high-rise limos as of wilderness bashing trucks. The outgoing LR4 was decisively outsold in the United States by the Pasha Range Rover, which is why the new version, which returns to the Discovery name its predecessor kept in other markets, has moved up market. It has lost the square-rigged styling of the LR4 and earlier Discovery models and looks more compact than the prior version. This is a visual illusion, at 195.7 inches, it's actually 5.6 inches longer, while its 72.7 inch height is 1.6 inches shorter. The design language clearly shows its relationship to the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport, although the Disco is taller and has fractionally less ostentation. The three cars share the same premium lightweight architecture, PLA, platform and are set to be produced alongside one another at JLR's Solihull plant in the UK, with JLR also confirming the Discovery will be one of the cars produced at its new plant in Slovakia when that opens. Style, some gained, some lost. The LR4S distinctive angular lines will be missed by some. The new Discovery has become far more of a lifestyle SUV, and the profile view offers more than a hint of Ford Explorer. The rear is less convincing, with the liftgate now a one-piece unit, 
The LR4 had clamshell style upper and lower panels, with a strange offset license plate location despite the vehicles having lost the stepped rear glass of its four bears. This looked faintly ridiculous when filled with the gawky UK. License plates on the cars we drove in Scotland. It's possible it will work better with more modestly proportioned US. Plates but equally possible that it won't. The cabin is more convincingly upmarket, clearly aimed at buyers swayed by plush arrivals such as the new Audi Q7 and Volvo XC90. Material quality feels a magnitude higher than in the LR4. The Discovery uses the analog instruments from the Evoque and Discovery Sport rather than the full digital panel of the Range Rover, but in every other regard it resembles its more expensive siblings in fit and finish. There's plenty of space and ample seating adjustments in the front, with equally impressive room in back. Power folding third row seats will be an option in the United States, with the chairs motoring themselves up from the cargo floor and back again at the press of a button. Land Rover claims that these rearmost seats are adult size, that would depend on finding particularly flexible, uncomplaining volunteers although there's more room in the way back than in the third row of the Mazda CX-9, which we don't classify as adult friendly. It is much more spacious and practical than either of Land Rover's other seven seat offerings, the Discovery Sport and the Range Rover Sport. Making it move. The choice of powertrains for American versions reflects the Discovery's position in the middle of the Land Rover range. The engines are V6S in supercharged gasoline and turbocharged diesel flavors, with the outside chance the US might also get one of the four-cylinder diesel versions designed for Europe. There are no V8S. The gas V6 is basically carried over from the LR4, producing 340 horsepower and 332 lbft of torque. The TD6 is the same engine as in the diesel-powered Range Rover, with 254 horsepower and 443 lbft of torque, impressive, but a measure off the 664 lbft of the Europe-only Audi SQ7 TDI, we'd love to be able to give you a clue how these fared against Land Rover's performance figures the gasoline discoveries claimed 6.9 seconds 0 to 60 mph time makes it easily the quickest discovery or LR4 variant yet, and we expect to better that by a bit. But with our test route slathered with axle deep mud, rough gravel tracks, and the occasional rocky scramble, we didn't get a chance to confirm anything other than the Discovery's ability to launch itself on a slippery surface with a satisfyingly hefty shove. Our provisional assessment is limited to the observation that the diesel engine is nearly as refined as the gasoline version at lower engine speeds and suffers from less throttle surge when crawling off-road, its greater torque at lower RPM making it better suited to ultra-low speed progress. Traveling gently did give a good chance to see part of the Athol Estates in Blair Athol, which also is the home to Land Rover Experience Scotland. The full estate covers 144,000 acres and takes in the sort of spectacular Scottish scenery that usually gets immortalized on shortbread tins. It belongs to the 12th Duke of Athol. Although he's South African, he retains the unlikely right bequeathed by Queen Victoria to one of his predecessors to have his own private army, the Athol Highlanders. The regiment is purely ceremonial these days, but we didn't risk angering any of its kilt-clad members by ripping up any of the tracks too badly. As with the Range Rover and Range Rover Sport, significant weight reduction has been made by switching the Discovery to a new, predominantly aluminum unibody and losing the LR4S massive structural reinforcement, which essentially was a combined unibody and separate frame that made Scotland's fourth bridge look under-engineered. The gasoline-powered version's weight is claimed to be some 1,000 pounds less than that of its predecessor, although the real-world change is likely to be somewhat less once we get the new model on our scales. The diet wasn't obvious during our low-speed touring. Getting muddy. The test venue was chosen to show off the Discovery's battery of off-road driving aids, which range from switchable modes for different types of terrain to a progress control system think off-road cruise control that tries to maintain a constant speed pretty much regardless of what you're driving over. There's an optional camera system that makes it easier to see over crests, 
and the development team also was proud to boast that the Disco can wade through up to 35.4 inches of water when riding on the optional air springs, although we didn't get a chance to test this assertion. Despite all the macho technology and mechanicals, one telling detail as on the LR4 is that a low-range transfer case is available only as an option. Its take rate will give a good indication of how many people are buying the Discovery for its off-asphalt chops. Even on this limited first acquaintance, it's obvious that the new Discovery feels more like the Range Rover than it does the LR4. JLR hopes this model will enjoy more success in the US, where the LR4 was always a slow seller just 14,000 found homes here last year. Lower pricing and higher standard equipment than the LR4 should give the Disco a good start, but we'll have to wait to find out how it copes with paved surfaces and real-world speeds to see if it can finish the job.